So I've got the Hitachi DH40FR, the one that I burned up at Cheryl's. I guess I burned up the winding sound like or smell like they got smoked. But anyway, let's see. So I started already uh, loosening up the little short Allen bolts. There. Um, so let's see, five thirty seconds. <clears throat> Doesn't look too bad in there. Smells just a little bit, not too bad. I mean, it was a hot day. She's got some miles on her. Let's see what the brushes look like. At least to make that real easy. A couple of bolts, take the cover off. Take this little cap off. Oh yeah, the brushes are beautiful. No problem there. Leads me to believe windings. The insulation burned off of them or something. Maybe. Yeah, they look pretty good. Can't really see by the camera the armature down in there, but it looks pretty bit, pretty darn good. All right, well that's that aspect. Now we got to figure out how to get the rest of this apart. All right, found this nice little parts breakdown online. That kind of helps. We got some more Allens. here take the handle off and some Phillips down here no problems there easy to get to the court if you ever need to repair anything that's for sure I thought some things through here I gotta say a lot better than some tools I've taken apart impact tools take everything apart in seconds and then when you got to do this it's like boring too bad in real life you can't fast forward like you can on YouTube so I wondered how that would come apart with wires being that that wires right through the case not showing a breakdown too clearly how that comes apart I think you can fish some of that wire down through there. Stout little bugger, I'll tell you that. The puzzle is finally revealing itself. Hmm, there's the gear. Top piston, it goes back and forth, drives the hammer. Hopefully, you can see that. Oh. Yeah, that guy's on there.
I'll tell you what. That motor don't look too bad. Now that could be in the windings down there. We'll have to yank those out now. But I have seen nothing that shows me except maybe the insulation around the end of the stator here. There we go. We got her on the run now. Phillips added bolts down in there. Okay, so <clears throat> when it comes to this guy, you just wiggle this. Pull that up out of there and then you've got all your gears inside there and then we still got to pull that part right there out and we'll have the armature part of it but this is interesting so where we took those two allen out down inside there more allen this holds in those brush holders so loosen that we either push or something to get these out. <clears throat> I don't need it. But pretty slick setup. An Allen set screw inside of a an Allen bolt. So far, kudos to the engineers. These this things this thing's pretty neat. But now I gotta get this guy out. Ooh, don't wanna break it. It's just plastic. The first time it looks like it just comes out, but <clears throat> you know how that is, nothing's ever that easy. Or a little further okay so I found the secret to this is you gotta drive that out it's just a bearing in there there we go just need to have the knee trick there still get this guy out of here I find a few secret to this stator here so i've got those allen wrenches or those allen set screws up out of there but i gotta get that out of there yet cheated a little bit i guess you could say <clears throat> there's little springs they're round yeah it's real hard to see a little spring steel and i just slide it i slid it right off of those little posts for the brush holders and then actually just tapping it on the ground <laughs> that worked. Woohoo! Cool. I gotta say, it really don't look bad. You usually see something burnt, hot spot, melted, something. This whole thing is in really good shape. <laughs> Crazy. Well, we'll take her to the place that I take motors to and see what they have to say. Testing it with the, uh, with the ohmmeter there. <clears throat> 
I don't know if this thing's any different than any other motor, but I don't have any continuity. So when you check it between the armature and the stator, or the armature and the, oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, somebody's going to laugh and say, yeah, I remember what that is. You know what? Don't get old. Anyway, when you check it from this point to this point, I have no continuity. And if I'm not mistaken, I didn't have any continuity from brush holder. Let's see. Let's just check that out. Now that we got it out. Nothing was grounded. I know that. But normally, I checked wire to wire. I did not have continuity. And I didn't check it to the brush holders, I don't think. Nope. I don't have any. Now, this thing ran. I don't know if you saw the video. This thing was running. Just not very good. It was running real slow. And that I don't have any continuity is crazy. Right, let's put it on Milla. Let's put it on Milla ohms. Or Milla ohm here. Something went south, but let's take it to the professionals, see what they say, and we'll be back to put it together, hopefully, later. Okay, so last night I was trying to measure this, and I was trying to think of what the armature commutator, that was the word I was looking for last night. Don't get old. Anyway, no, actually, it's funny because in the middle of the night, that's when I end up fixing more things. So I guess that's probably my trick of the trade. So I kind of remembered about measuring these. So you don't have continuity through there because the winding should be separate to create a field in here. But you do check, and I, I did that, where you can check each segment to ground to make sure that nothing's grounded out. And I did. Nothing was went from here in each segment and checked and there was nothing grounded out here you can check each segment side by side and make sure there's just a slight bit of ohms resistance there and then you do it 180 across from each other too so anyway i did i did check most of that okay last night but uh it's funny how things come to you in the middle of the night i know when i used to fix forklifts there was a system on the they call it a bendy that's an articulating forklift and so as you turn your wheel the whole forks and everything turn and what happened is they had, it's called EV100. It was the system that they used. It was a silicon controlled rectifier, SCR system. Very complicated, had five SCRs in it, computer controlled. And anyway, very limited diagnostics on this thing. You had to really kind of understand the system. And it had one for each drive wheel. And as you turn the wheel, the inside wheel would stop, to make it easier to make a tighter turn. And then at some point when you were really in a tight turn, the inside wheel would reverse and i had one that would run especially if you jacked the thing up it'd run fine you put it on the ground and the one motor you could tell it wasn't really pulling right and i spent hours trying to figure this thing out even called our trainer he came out couldn't figure it out we finally gave up went home i ended up going to bed middle of the night three o'clock in the morning or so i wake up and go epiphany i got it uh it was actually the choke reactor the choke part of the reactor but i had to think through the system of my training and stuff like that it took a while to figure it out and um even though several other guys couldn't it finally came to me in the middle of the night and the reason none of us ever even thought of it is it's the part that none of us have ever changed i mean and all the guys there and how many years of experience we all have together and nobody thought about that being the problem <laughs> Uh, it's just something nobody had ever changed, you know, a component that never goes bad. But when you can relax at night, I guess that's the tip, the tricks of the trade today is if you can't fix something and you finally give up, it's okay, relax, sleep on it. It'll probably come to you about two o'clock in the morning. At least it does for me. Anyway, that's my, my trick for today. All right. Well, I'm going to take this thing over to the, uh, 
store that fixes our motors here and we're gonna see if they can find, uh, figure out what's wrong with it uh, I can't find anything just going through it with the ohms test so there's, there's something else wrong and we'll find out got back from the electric place and they checked everything out and like I said there was nothing grounded or shorted in this armature or the stator but um, one thing you did say is if you look at the commutator it's a little bit dark. I mean, the brushes were really in good shape, but he said, go ahead and sand that. And I kind of ran my fingernail down in between each segment there. And um, he said, take a, you know, like some, um, he's, he's cleaned one up and couldn't get it to clear the growling test, but uh, it still worked fine. So he said, give it a shot for whatever it's worth. We'll put it back together. Hope for the best. The only other option it could be is in this um, rheostat, this switch here. I get good continuity through the one that goes directly straight through it um the other leg of it goes through this rheostat and i get a little bit of a uh, ohms resistance but that you know perfectly understandable i mean that's what this is doing is cutting back the it's putting resistance in there even though i put it all the way up i'm sure there's a slight bit of resistance it's not much um that's the only thing else it could be but we'll clean this up put it together and see what happens all right got her all cleaned up I took some uh, emery cloth, cleaned it all up, went through all those segments with the utility knife, and then I took a red scotch bright pad and polished it up. And all that looks pretty good. We do get got a little bit of discoloration on the bearing. I don't really think it was spinning in there. Um, I'll have to check the. Let's see where that it goes in here. Um, okay, that has a metal sleeve on that lower bearing how about the upper bearing upper bearing went into a metal housing and it doesn't i mean as tight as that was i don't think that was spinning but um we'll clean that up put this all together and give it a shot if not oh well it's only my time right what's time time's money right <laughs> well i don't know if you can see that but there's a little bit of smoke coming out of it i can smell it the Armature sparked just a little bit and it tried to run. Wish I would have the camera on. It ran for a sec. Sounded okay and then we let the smoke out of it. You know what happens once you leave the smoke out of it, it's all over. I think it's completely dead now. Let's see if we can get it to do it again. No, nope, she's gone. We're dead in the water, and I'll pull it back apart and see what damage. There must be something still shorted out in there, despite what everybody says. All right, so just for kicks and giggles here, I figure why not? Let's just go ahead and tear it back apart again. Because I looked in there, and I'll tell you what, that armature was hot. I really honestly think that there is something wrong with the windings in that armature, which kind of makes sense because it didn't really pass that growler test um this was just kind of a pig in a, pig, oh, yeah, a pig in a poke um so i mean that showed that there is a possibility that something in that armature was grounded out even though it doesn't read out of an ohms test with the growler test it did kind of come up but there could be a problem but he said he's cleaned those out and uh ran them and they were okay even though the growler test showed that it wasn't so we gave it a shot i mean this kind of stuff is just really uh 80 80 20 <laughs> probably at best for working it's not something that there's any guarantees on i know when i used to work on forklifts we would have the big drive motors and we would see that the brushes were wore out on them and so we would end up putting new brushes in it and had a little uh i got it here somewhere but it's a brush file and you can actually stick it right down in while the motor's running and it'll it'll sit there and it's a, a little file that'll grind away and clean up that armature as the machine's running um get up to jack up the drive tires and you know run the motor and clean the armature out and uh, commutator and um anyway that that a lot of times helped but it, you know even at that it was about a 50 50 proposition um sometimes that didn't work out so you just had to tell the customer we got to pull the drive motor out which was no fun in the field. Always wanted to shop those, but 
did quite a few of them right out in the field. Sometimes on your back. Sometimes if you're fortunate and they had a hoist, you could actually take a hoist and take the battery out, flip the forklift up on the mast, and then you could just stand right here and there's your motor. Boom. Easy peasy. All right, well, let's just uh, kick some giggles, see what happens. We'll plug this guy in and uh, maybe you'll be able to see some smoke this time. Nope, she's deader than the door now, so that's that's it. She's toast. So I pulled that thing out and uh, she was definitely, definitely warm. Mm, no dice. So it's burned through now. Crazy thing is, you can't see it in there. It looks perfectly fine, but unless you tore that, that armature all apart, you're never going to find it. So that answers that. Well, hey, you know, it was worth a shot. Didn't cost me anything. Like I said, just my time. And uh, now I got to go out and spend four or 500 bucks for a new one. But hey, at least I got this one for a song and dance. Uh, part of a deal I made with a guy. And so it got me a little bit of use. Uh, probably worth what I ended up having into it. And uh, so now I have to look for a new Hitachi. So just for kicks and giggles, I decided to check to see like what would the armature and also the stator i think the armature is about 170 bucks and you're looking about 106 dollars for the stator so pretty much you know that's no good either we you know i thought we'd try that route but you know today's age everything's a throwaway society you just throw it away don't bother so you know when you're gonna work on something like this just kind of already go with that idea that you're probably gonna end up throwing it away and throwing away your time but you know don't get too downhearted about it it's just the way it is and um give it, give it a shot i mean sometimes we get fortunate and something simple you just clean something up and boom it runs so you know don't give up and don't get downhearted but uh unfortunately it costs more than parts to fix so buy a new one and be done with it if you don't have the time to deal with it and you don't want the heartbreak then spend the money and go buy a new one that's that's our only options you know that's today all right anyway till next time this is Dwayne on tricks to the trades one week later well just a quick update to the update on the old hitachi i actually kept looking around on the internet and i found for 32 dollars. sorry yeah sorry out of china but you know an, an armature and so it takes till august 26th this is um july 26th something like that so about a month to get it from china but hey for 30 bucks let's give it a shot you know get more video of tearing it apart and putting a new armature and seeing if that works not well not 30 bucks <laughs> to try anyway we'll try it see what happens and as far as this job, this has been on hold because I found that uh, you can actually get this little spot welder, spot welder these tabs back together again, probably about 50 bucks. But think about it, if I can keep making batteries, saving cells, in the end it, it'll pay for itself. One battery costs more than 50 bucks, so, you know, I would love to change this little display out too, because I have one that does not have, it, it broke. It doesn't read the LED display whether or not your battery is dead or not. So it would be really cool if I can... I bet I can unsolder that. It'll it'll be a little bit tedious, but I just have those B plus and B minus. So I could actually swap one of those little circuit boards out and get a uh, another one that I have to work. So eh, there's my irons in the fire on top of... Looks like I have to order this echo that I got the rubber plug is leaking this was my father-in-law's and you know that ethanol gas ethanol tears that rubber up and stuff like that thing runs good just leaks fuel all over the place so anyway get that running too and uh, hopefully next video we'll get all the parts together and get all these little projects rounded up it's always something. All right. Well, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Tricks to the Trades.